hi I'm Lisa and this is my first video for the Tulabula Vintage channel. First time I've ever bought a job lot of jewellery on eBay and uh, the first time therefore that I've ever created a video of a job lot of vintage jewellery. So be gentle with me. If you've got knowledge of vintage jewellery then I'm still learning and I've got a lot to learn. Other people watching this will be wanting to learn too so please feel free to share your knowledge with us in the comments. This is very exciting because this is my first vintage jewellery bulk buy from eBay. Um, it's a nice weighty parcel. Let me uh, zoom out and go out a little bit. Nice weighty parcel there. So uh, very exciting to receive it. Uh, it cost me £21 for the lot and then £4 for postage. So £25 in total. And, well, I shall just lay it all out and we shall get started and have a look at what's in there. Right, so I've laid it all out on my sister's scarred, rather scarred dining room table. You probably can't see it all. In fact, you, let me just pull out. That's everything. But in the background, you see all the, the pots of plants that I'm supposed to be watering, <laughs> which is why I'm here, partly, and also for the peace and quiet that I get at my sister's house rather than at my house. So that's everything. Not sure if anything there has taken your interest. But when I was buying, you know, if you're going to spend out even £25 for something, um, you, you've got to see one or two things in there that you like that either appeal to you from a saleable point of view or that appeal to you from a personal point of view because I'm just early on in the buying and selling of vintage jewellery. So when I'm buying stuff, I want to make sure that there's at least one or two pieces that I would wear personally. So if nothing else, I, guess I can get something out of it. Um, but also I do try and keep an eye out for sort of classic pieces and when on eBay people have these big lots they generally just lay them out fairly sort of haphazardly. Some people lay them out quite neatly so you can at least get a good view of each item um, but then some just like pile them all in and you just have to try and pick out what looks interesting. Um, again when it comes to checking things, I would imagine that just about every seller has checked all the items for gold and silver. Uh, it is worth looking. It is worth getting your, uh, I've got one of these, getting your loop out and uh, at least checking for gold and silver marks. This is really useful. It uh, costs ne very little on eBay. I should put the link in for it. This one even has a light and two different magnifiers. So it's worth checking anyway for um, your gold and silver marks on there. Um, <clears throat> but in general, I would imagine that the sellers have been pretty meticulous at least about that and making sure they keep anything that might be a precious metal or a precious, a very precious stone. Um, but you never know, sometimes they miss it. But is it, when you're selling and buying and selling costume jewellery in particular, which I am, then it's actually, you, you're not expecting to find necessarily gold and silver, but that doesn't mean that you won't find something uh, that's very precious or saleable in the costume jewellery market. So again, that loop comes in very useful for checking in case um, the jewellery maker's mark is on there because a lot of the good costume jewellery makers will have left their mark and their copyright on there. Um, but you never know. Sometimes things get overlooked by the sellers, so it's always worth checking anyway. So what appealed to me when I first saw this lot on eBay? These were one of the first things that appealed to me because I would wear these. They are enameled, uh, gold tone. Let's see how close I can get it. Uh, what's called cloisonne 
style jewellery where the uh, enamel is separated by thin metal. Um, these lovely flowers that really catch the light. A little bit tarnished around the top of one of them. And uh, these are obviously for pierced ears. And the uh, one of these I notice is a little bit wonky. Needs to be put back into shape, but would still hang fine. Um, no markings on these, just uh, gold tone, shiny gold backs. So I really like those as something I would wear. And along the same lines, something I probably wouldn't wear because I don't really wear brooches, but which again uh, caught my eye is this beautiful lotus flower cloisonne brooch sort of with the dark blue coming out to the turquoisey blue on the outside. Very much modelled in the Art Nouveau style uh, of jewellery and uh, was probably 1980s, this one. So uh, again, really pretty piece that caught my eye. And very saleable. People on the lookout for these kinds of items, good quality cloisonne items. So, uh, yeah, really like that piece. Um, the people who sell these items quite often, in the if they've got the time, and they're not just doing a you know big batch. Let's get rid of this um, for whatever price I can get for it. Uh, they will go through as well and. Um, check to see if there are some costume jewellery marks on there um, and will often, even if they don't give all the details in their post, they'll often say, oh, and, you know, in here you'll find some Sarah, Co there's a Sarah Coventry this or a Coro that. So, um, uh, you know, th they do try and appeal to the buyer somewhat with that, but they're not going to give a lot of details. So it's worth just, you know, folk going to the eBay uh, lot, looking at the pictures, trying to um, to magnify what you're seeing on the screen so you can get a good look at what is there and sort of make sort of judgments on uh, what you're seeing. And one of the things I did see, which I've seen around quite a lot, well, I say quite a lot, I've seen these on Etsy and other sites I think my sister's clock's about to chime, so or rather cuckoo, except it's not a cuckoo clock. It makes a really funny noise. Um, I think it might do that any second. Uh, I apologise if it does, but um, yeah, these cufflinks are not branded. Um, but they've got, I've seen quite a few of these with different classic cars on. Uh, but not this particular model, so it'd uh, be interesting to see how these do if I put them in my Etsy shop. But I think the thing with uh, something like these cufflinks is they can have an appeal both to costume jewellery lovers, but also to uh, car lovers as well, people who like classic cars. I think, but don't hold me to it because my car knowledge is not great, I think... I'm not going to put, I'm going to put that one down because it, it's trying to focus on both and then making them fuzzy. I think that's a Ford, an early Ford. But like I said, don't hold me to it and tell me if you know better in the comments. But as I said, I've seen those for sale on Etsy and eBay for five to 15 pounds a pair. So uh, I know that they do have some appeal. Um, these as well, I have seen recently on Etsy, actually, after I bought these, I did a little search on them. I uh, did like a reverse Google search. They're mother of pearl owl earrings, and I know a lot of people collect owl things. So again, a double appeal for costume jewellery fans and owl lovers. And these I have seen recently on Etsy, actually, for £24. That's British pounds if you're not in the UK. Um, so I know, again, that those are quite saleable and hopefully have quite a good appeal to a wider audience. Because if you're looking for a gift, 
for somebody who loves their owls, then that would be a perfect gift. This is an example of something that was uh, has been marked. It's a faux seed pearl necklace with uh, a gold, thin gold chain. Um, let me put it up against my hand so you can perhaps see it a bit better. It's um, yeah, it really could do with a clean. You can see around the the pearls that it's um, the metal has coloured the pearls slightly on the edges, but it does have a marking on the clasp there, and you're probably not going to be able to read that. But it says Amerique on the clasp. A M E R I K. Now that could mean one of two things. Americana was a German company. That's Americana with a K. It was a German company that moved to the US in the early 1900s. And um, some of their costume jewellery was marked with the Amerique mark. Um, but also there's a type of gold plating that uses uh, that marking as well. And it indicates the amount of gold that's used in the plating. So I'm not sure which of those two it is, as the Americana company did use a lot of uh, seed pearls and faux pearls in their jewellery. But um, it could be one of those two things. Again, let me know if you know what you think I'm talking nonsense because that is a very good possibility it has been known um, and it's uh, something completely different or you know for sure it's which of those two things it is now this scarf brooch which is silver tone I'm not sure if it looks a bit gold tone in this light but it's a silver tone uh, scarf brooch uh, you can see why I call it a scarf brooch, because it's actually hinged on the back rather than having a pin on it. So you uh, thread your scarf through there. Um, and this is also marked, and again, you're probably not going to be able to see it, but it's marked S517. And I haven't really been able to find out exactly what that means, um, because S usually suggests a silver mark. But 517 would suggest that it's just 50% silver, which I wouldn't see the point of actually even bothering put that, putting that on something because that's quite a low silver content. Um, maybe it means it's silver plated. I don't know. I have seen a similar one on eBay, which was uh, described as gold plated. So it may be the silver plated version of that. But it's quite a nice, if you like scarf, clips and or brooches I think this is quite a nice um, nice example kind of bold but minimalist really in terms of uh, in terms of the styling so uh, yeah we've got that one that did appeal to me when I saw it in the picture I just thought I'd quite like to see that closer up I don't think it's got a great value but um, I do like it as a piece now, these again, I'm going through as much as I can that um, initially that had markings as well on because uh, the they tend to have slightly higher value. And these are clip on earrings. But with like a screw fixing at the back, so you can see there there's like a screw, I assume to tighten it or loosen it, depending what the wearer needs. And these, this is also marked, it's marked Pat Pending and also Jewel Craft. I think that's the Jewel Craft there. And then I think the Pat Pending is on there somewhere. And Jewel Craft is, you might know this actually, because they were fairly well known. Uh, it was a brand that was created by Coro in the 1920s. And Coro is a famous costume jeweller. Um, and then was produced in the UK from the 1940s, which is why a lot of UK jewellery will have jewel craft on it. Uh, they were huge in the 1960s, produced a lot of stuff in the 1960s, whereas Coracraft, jewel craft was sort of their general range and Coracraft was their higher end range. And another brand you might come across that was a Coro brand was Vendome as well. So, um, 
there is a lot of jewellery out there. They were quite prolific in producing the jewellery when they were in operation. Um, these, the pat pending on these, uh, pat pend means patent pending, which means that when they produced them, they probably had a patent in the offing that they submitted, um, which usually meant on jewellery, it usually means that a fixing a part of it, they were trying to get the patent on. And I would imagine in this case, it's this particular clasp with the screw they probably wanted to to get the patent for. I'm not quite sure what this is supposed to depict. Is it a wheat sheaf? Is it a flame? It could be quite symbolic of a flame. It kind of has got the look of wheat, grass, some sort of foliage blowing in the wind. But I don't know for sure. So if you know, then please do tell me in the comments. Um, and also, if you know what era it's from, definitely mid-century, um, but I'm not sure if it's 70s or it could be uh, earlier than that. So uh, let me know what you know about these earrings. They're quite distinctive, aren't they? This one I like. I like this. It's very simple. It's this. Uh, you can't see it because it was right on the side. So um, it's like a gold tone star a faceted star or a sun flash of some sort um and it's got this lovely um chain as well it's a slightly unusual linked chain very sort of yellow gold tone and you will see as i move that round that it has actually got something written again next to the class Can read that I'm not even sure if it's the right way around I haven't got my glasses on anyway it says B.E. Cook London and again B.E. Cook created jewellery fashion jewellery uh, costume jewellery as well as higher end stuff so yeah that's a really nice piece and um Really catches the light nicely with those facets. I loved this. I loved it in the, when I first saw it in the picture. It's hard to get it to catch the light the way it should, but um, I don't know much about it. I don't know what that is. It's it's obviously a teardrop shaped pendant, but it's um, it's got depth to it because of the way it's been designed with that kind of curving round gold. And in the middle is like a, f a faux crystal opal or rainbow opal or something. It's, um, it actually has the look of it when it catches the light of actually not being polished. It almost looks like it's um, got a rough surface, but I can guarantee, guarantee you it is very smooth surface. So I'm really not sure what that is. I do like it, there's no markings on it. And when it catches the light, it's really pretty, even though obviously you've got the gold at the back. So you're very much dependent on the front light source. But yeah, don't know. If you know anything about that, please let me know. These star cufflinks, nothing overly special. Uh, in set in a silver tone but they're like gold stars again or sun flash or whatever uh, gold in black enamel just a nice simple cuff link these are fun these i don't know what era these are from because they are very 1920s 1930s in appearance i mean immediately see them and you think great gatsby or something like that that era but they're so delicate i'd be amazed if they've survived since that era so i don't know if they're like a revival piece uh, but lots and lots of plastic beads black and white with these um like little crystal stones in the middle and these 
uh, leaves or yes leaves not feathers are they they're leaves on these little metal uh, pieces here and they're clip-ons obviously for that era but um, yeah if anybody knows anything about these please do let me know they're ever so fun they definitely evoke the bright young things era but you know I don't know if they genuinely would be able we could say that they were that era or if they're something more recent. Moving on, this, uh, this leaf brooch in gold tone is quite a nice piece. It's a little bit, I don't know, the gold's, the, uh, the metal's looking a little bit damaged or corroded in places, just little spots. You can see the little spots on there. That's where it's losing its gold colour. But interestingly, those pearls, I would have said would be faux, but they, I, they've they passed the pearl test. They've got the grittiness when you rub them against your teeth. And yes, I did do it. Um, um, but it's, it would be nice. I don't know if you can clean it up or do anything with it, restore it. But uh, it's a nice brooch. You can see at the back, it just needs a bit of TLC, I think. But uh, the... There's no markings on it either, but I think it'd make a nice addition to somebody's uh, vintage jewellery collection. We've also got this brooch. I would say it's just, a, it's no, again, no markings. It's a nice piece, nice gold tone to it with those little stones in the middle, which all appear to be there. Um, I don't know if you can get it here. Let's do it that way around and then it might focus on the stones a bit. Um, but yeah, it's a nice classic piece, but like nothing special, nothing stands out particularly as being any different from many other costume jewellery pieces on that one. We've got this Wimmel brooch. This actually did appeal to me. I just wanted to see it. Uh, I knew it probably didn't have a huge value. It's a souvenir piece, I would imagine, from Holland, as you can see there. I hope. Can you see it says Holland across the bottom there? It's a, uh, in case you're wondering, it's a pin. It's a, a brooch. It's just fun. It's, um, it's a windmill brooch from Holland and the sails actually go round. And of course, you've got these clogs hanging from the bottom here. Like I said, fun and probably a souvenir piece. And I just uh, I just like that. Just think it's quite a, a nice little piece there. This one appealed to me as something I would wear. And it's... Um, abalone shell inlaid in a pendant silver tone pendant um but when i got it i thought first of all i was thinking it hadn't been done very well hadn't been made very well because if you look at it it doesn't look like it's very centered in the pendant but actually i think it's been damaged i think there's a dent there and it's kind of thrown off the symmetry of it which is a real shame and probably i'll keep this one for myself as a result um, but it's a pretty piece and actually if you turn it over it took me a long time to decipher what the uh, marking was on the back so I don't expect even if you can see that I don't expect you to be able to read it because some of it's worn away but it actually says exquisite and the exquisite jewellery company was around from 1914 to the 70s and it made a lot of abalone style jewellery so this is probably would have been one of their classic pieces yeah you can definitely see it's got a almost dent or a divot or you know in it there um they were based in solihull so a uk based production on these uh, in the 1950s uh, 
or rather the 1950s was when they were making a lot of the abalone style jewellery. But I think this probably is a little bit later, probably 60s or 70s. And the brand was used by a company called WAP Watson. So look out for Exquisite. Likely to find in the UK, you're likely to find Exquisite around and especially look for the abalone shell ones. But hopefully you'll find something with a little bit better preserved abalone shell than, than this one, which, yes, is looking a little sorry for itself, which is a shame. Right. We'll, um, that's better, focused in again. Uh, we'll have a quick run through the uh, rest of the items fairly speedily as I don't think there was anything left that was overly interesting but let me know if you spot something that you think I should know more about um we have got what shall I go for next oh where is it I can't see it the drop pendant there got this kind of drop pendant it actually has the look of silver to it you know when silver um ages it has that look of aged silver i can't find a silver mark on it and at first i wasn't quite sure what the point of these were but i've i've looked them up and i think this is what you call a fob seal pendant so people used to wear them around their neck and have their seal at the bottom this is just a, a smooth uh, stone at the bottom, but um, I believe that people used to have seals on these, so they seal, you know, with wax, and they sealed their letters and things. Um, but yeah, let me know if you know any more about these kind of things, because um, obviously when it hangs around the neck, you don't really see the stone itself, which you can understand when it was a seal, that, um, you know, People weren't especially wanting people to see that the seal was there. But um, with a stone, you'd think you'd want it more on display. But let me know what you know about fob seal pendants or otherwise, if that's not a fob seal pendant. Um, what else have we got? Small black and gold brooch. Nothing special. It's nice, but it's a fairly classic standard costume jewellery piece this necklace and bracelet set which you can't actually see from where you are let me uh, come out I'll bring the bracelet over there's a necklace the same and I'm not even sure you'd class this as particularly vintage again if you know differently let me know but it's um, just stones really like crystals in a gold tone metal wire um, and some of the stones are looking a bit damaged but I, I don't see anything special about that at all but you may know differently please let me know we've got this vint oh yes we've got uh, a couple of religions represented we've got this vintage gold rosary with purple beads I'm not Catholic so I don't know a great deal about rosaries um, but might mean something to to you and we've also got a star of david pendant now this is marked this is marked as um It's marked as very gold and let me see if I can focus that a little bit better. And oriflame. Now very gold it's not helping, is it? <laughs> very gold is gilded. It usually means it's a gilded piece. Uh, oriflame, well the only oriflame I know is a Swedish cosmetics company. And I know they do, do some jewellery. But I didn't know they did religious jewellery. So I don't know if it's the same or a flame or means something completely different. Please let me know. 
I am very reliant on other people's expertise. I think we're always learning as we do these things. And I'm particularly early on in my journey of doing this. Uh, so I'm always happy to learn something new about the jewellery that I'm buying. I also had a range of uh, different 80s, 70s, 80s style and 90s. In fact, I'm not sure where they've gone. The 90s uh, power dressing ones that I found. Hang on. I think my grandma had some like these. Look. These are just enameled with gilding. Not gilding with uh, gold in between. Then we've got the classic 80s plastic half sphere. Both of them are on clip-on earrings. And there were a couple of other pairs that I seem to have mislaid, but we did. My youngest sister had her hem party after the actual wedding because due to COVID, not only was the wedding postponed once, but we couldn't do a hen party. So we did it after the, uh, after the event. And my other sister and I, dressed up and we went in our 80s outfits and I borrowed the earrings <laughs> and I obviously haven't put them all back so we've got I've got a pair of these orange ones I've got a pair of the cream cream enamel ones and I know I've got at least one or two other pairs that obviously haven't made their way back to this pile. Um, we've got a faux pearl pin. Nothing special. Just, just is what it is. I've got, what else was in there? There was a cross somewhere. I forgot there was another cross. Oh, I think I've dropped it on the floor. Hold on. I'm back. I had dropped it and forgotten to pick it up again. So tiny, I missed it. Uh, we've got this little silver. Actually, again, this looks like and feels like it could be real silver, but there's no mark on it. But it's a, just a tiny Celtic cross that I do know about because uh, although we're not Catholic, my mum is a church minister and she collects crosses, uh, just not crucifixes. So, um, I might give this one to her to add to her collection. Then we've got this faux pearl necklace again, just a pretty pearl pearl necklace. Oh, the sun's gone in, otherwise it would catch the light a bit better. It does have this lovely pretty clasp on it. That's nice. So uh, that kind of... Uh, Dates it era wise to a bit older, but um, again, nothing, nothing overly exciting. I don't think about that. We've got this flower pendant with a green stone in it. Again, I quite like that. Something I would wear. And the oh, they've got more abalone shell. This one is in a ring, a bit more elaborate ring. But again, again, it's um, it's gold tone, and it's looking quite um, quite w the worse for wear, with some quite a bit of tarnish. But it's a pretty pretty ring if it was cleaned up. Oh, and this actually, this is probably one of the better pieces. Is this uh, damascene bracelet? Damascene is a style of uh, jewellery, ancient style of creating jewellery and, and other decorative pieces, which is putting, uh, which is sort of black enamel with gold inlaid on it. Uh, in this case, not real gold. Um, now it's most common, uh, commonly comes from Toledo in Spain or from Japan. I, this is more along the Spanish style. Um, it's just a, I don't know if you can see, it's leaves, a uh, kind of pattern of leaves. And you've got this decent clasp and safety chain on as well, although it's designed for a much smaller uh, wrist than mine. But damascene style jewellery is still quite popular. 
you will see it around. Got a tarnished gold tone ring again. Uh, nothing special at all there. I don't even know if it if it maybe had something engraved or something on there. It's very worn down now, so nothing there. And what haven't I done? I think that's pretty much. Ev oh, almost forgot. Last thing I think is this faux pearl bracelet and actually this one does have a marking it's got quite a pretty clasp there and it does have a marking and it says dpr on the clasp now the only dpr i can find mentioned to do with costume jewelry is an indian jewelry company so it's possible that's come from this indian jewelry company dpr but again if you know better please let me know and that is the lot i think there's over 30 pieces there if you count the earrings that i can no longer find so or rather that i haven't put back i'm sure if i did a search i'd find them eventually so over 30 pieces for 25 pounds if I was going to, I probably won't list all of them. I don't think everything is good enough quality to be sold. But the main pieces, I think just one or two, probably the this and the earrings alone that I showed right at the beginning would give me profit if I sold those on my £25 and everything else will just be nice little extra. Um, but let me know what you think of them. Let me know if I've missed something. Let me know if I've missed some information about something that would be uh, interesting, useful to know. And uh, if you share that information, I can always update people on a later video. So thank you. Thank you for watching this first video. I'm pretty sure there are a couple of dumb things I said in there and I will regret it when I look back over it because uh, sometimes when you're filming, don't realise that you're not quite saying the right things or you just let something come out that probably wasn't what you were actually wanting to say in the first place. So we shall see anyway when we play it back. I did think afterwards, I did a quick search again on that uh, S517 marking that was on the brooch um, because I thought it perhaps meant that it was silver plated. Uh, still got not got a definitive answer but that did come up as also being a grade of steel S517 whatever it was. Um, so I don't know I've never seen a steel grading on a piece of jewellery before so I'm not sure that is the case but that was an alternative thing it could have been as well. If you liked any of the jewellery that you saw then, then most of the better stuff, not necessarily all of it better stuff will end up in my Tulabula Vintage Etsy store so please go along and have a look if there was something you liked. Uh, depending on when you're watching this if you saw something you liked but it's not on the store it might mean it hasn't made it there yet because I am gradually filling the store out but it also might mean that it never got listed or it's been sold. So feel free to message me if there's something you liked and you can't see it in the store because I can take a look and see if I've still got it or not. I'm also on Instagram and TikTok as Tulabula Vintage. So if you're on those platforms, you like shorter videos, I do quick haul videos on those platforms. Also share photos of things that I've bought and things that I'm selling. Uh, so if you like that kind of thing, then find me on Instagram and TikTok as well. And stay tuned. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you're eager to know when more videos are coming out, we will have future uh, vintage jewellery haul videos and also some charity shop haul videos as well when I do a big charity shop. If I get a lot of stuff, then I'll create a video on it. So please subscribe to the channel and we will let you know when a new video is available.